All right, so we're going to find the area of a transformation. We're going to transform something and then find the new area of that something. And there's a really neat way to do it. Uh, to do it, let's look at the unit square first of all. So there's my unit square, and now I'm going to transform it by some matrix. But because I'm trying to prove how to do this, uh, I'm just going to transform it by the matrix uh, A, B, C, D. Now I'm going to multiply the whole... Um, the whole unit square by that. So I'm going to use that point, 0, 0. I'm going to use that point, um, what is that? That's 0, 1. I'm going to use that point, which is 1, 1. And I'm going to use that point, which is 1, 0. And I'm going to multiply those matrices together to get a new result. So let's do part of it, and then I'll do the rest. A times 0, B times 0. That first result is going to be 0. Um, A times 0, B times 1, that next result is going to be B. Uh, A times 1, B times 1, that next result is going to be A plus B. And I can continue on for the rest of the matrix. So here is my transformed matrix, and this point lines up with this point, this point lines up with that point, that point lines up with that point, and that point lines up with that point. Now let's actually transform our matrix here. So the point 0, 0 is still the point 0, 0. The point BD, let's for simplicity's sake assume that these are all positive numbers. Uh, if the point uh, 0, 1 becomes point BD, that means it's moving across somewhere to the point B and moving up somewhere to the point D. So I'll just move that to here like that. Uh, now this point here is interesting because it's, 1, 1, the point 1, 1 is moving to A plus B and moving to C plus D. Um, so that means that it's going to move up further across than that and further over here. So let's put that um, here. These are arbitrary numbers anyway. Uh, and now I'm going to move this last point and it's moving by A and C. All right, so something about here, I believe. Now the result is something special, or should be close to something special. We get a parallelogram, and we can label up these points. So that's point um, BD. This is point, it's quite complicated, A plus B, C plus D. And this is point uh, AC. Put that in there. All right, so we've got our new points there. Now we can look at what the uh, area of that shape is. And we're going to do that by drawing a box around it, first of all. Okay, so the box is drawn. Uh, and now we should, be, although my box is a little bit out, but it'll do for now. Um, now, I'm going to draw a little shape in there just make that a little bit a little bit neater draw a little shape in there and that's about it that's my parallelogram um, so I'm just going to neaten up that parallelogram a little bit okay that's close enough to what I want now a couple of things to note these two triangles are actually the same it's pretty easy to prove that the parallel lines here parallel lines here we get two congruent triangles uh, and these two are the same as well. These are congruent triangles as well. Uh, now these two rectangles, on the other hand, they're a different kettle of fish. Let's start labeling some points here. All right, so this is point AC. So that means that this length here is length A. Now this is uh, point BD, which means that that length there is uh, D. Uh, what about this length here? Well, this is AC, so that length is C. So that's C there, and obviously those are the same. Now, this point here is interesting because it's A plus B. So A plus B, so that's B there, and obviously they're the same. Uh, now, let's look at this length here. Well, uh, this is C from there to there. This is C plus D, so that must be D. You can see that's where we're getting our congruent triangles from. Now, B, so that's B. B, uh, where are we? D, 
D plus C or C plus D. So that's C there, that's C there. And it turns out they are the same. And then we have this triangle here, which is uh, B, A. Now we've already done our C there. So now we've labeled up this entire thing in terms of A, B, C, and D. And now we can find the area of our parallelogram. Now the easiest way for me to find this parallelogram is to do the entire rectangle, uh, which is C, D, uh, C plus D times A plus B. Okay, and now I need to subtract some bits. So I'm going to subtract uh, this rectangle and this rectangle, which are both uh, B, C, so minus 2 B, C. Okay, and now I can do like subtracting four triangles, but actually if I put that triangle and that triangle together, I'll get a rectangle. If I put this triangle and this triangle together, I'll get a rectangle. So I'm going to subtract the two rectangles now. One rectangle is B times D, and one rectangle is A times C. Okay, uh, and now I'll just sort of go through the motions here. So I just expanded that bracket there, and I've still got all of this stuff here. And now I can start cancelling stuff out. AC, negative AC, um, BD, negative BD. Um, I've got a DA, a BC, and a negative 2BC. So BC minus 2BC is minus BC. So what I get is DA, I really should write that as AD, minus BC. AD minus BC. Okay, interesting. So, looking at our matrix here, A, B, C, D, this thing here, AD minus BC, we can say that the area of that par parallelogram is equal to the determinant of the matrix. So, recapping, we had a unit square, which is 1 by 1, which is 1 squared. Uh, we can now say that the area of a 1 by 1 square is equal to um, the determinant of, oh, sorry, the area of the transformation of a 1 by 1 square is equal to the determinant of the transformation matrix. Uh, now, the world, the universe, well, at least the 2D universe, is made up entirely of 1 by 1 squares. So if we can transform a the area of a 1 by 1 square by just saying it's the determinant of A, then a, say, 2 by 2 square would be equal to the area of the 2 by 2 square times this. And that's kind of the important part of this whole thing. The area of an image is equal to the determinant of the transformation matrix times the area of the original object. Because an object is just made up of 1 by 1 squares. And what we're doing is transforming all of those 1 by 1 squares by a factor of the determinant of A. And that's it for this video. This is really just the proof of it. We might do a couple of examples, especially some sort of tricky sort of backwards things.